Hi everyone, Mike McConville here one more time, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. Uh, welcome back to my YouTube subscribers, my Patreon subscribers, and any new viewers that are here for the first time. This is a, a limited edition Fender Harley Davidson Softail Strat. Here's something you don't see every day. So this is the case, and this is the guitar. So this is one of my customers from uh, Reading, uh, Pennsylvania. Runs a sort of high-end transmission shop. Here's the headstock detail. Of course there'll be a compensated nut going on this one as well. Here's a little bit more of the uh, body detail. Sort of smooth chrome covers and charcoal pearlescence fingerboard. No knurling on the knobs, right? And it's just got a five-way switch. That isn't a decal, that's an actual plaque. Uh, these are actually 8 to 38 strings. And that bridge is resting right against the top. So we want to set it up for 9 to 46 strings. So the first thing we got to do is throw a set of 9 to 46 strings on there and balance that tremolo with the K value of the springs in the back. This is the tail end of the guitar here on the lower bout. Of course, Jody designs and builds custom transmissions from the ground up. So what better guy to have a guitar like this than a tremolo? One thing I wanted to mention is I actually put a radius on my string winder so that you don't score the headstock. I mean, this is a mint guitar. The cavity is so deep in those string winders that, you know, when you put them on the tuner and start winding them, you'll, you'll scrape a pattern into the side of the headstock. It's better off being a little too shallow than a little too deep. Just saying. So this is what I'm talking about. You put that on there and you'll see as I turn that, and I've already cut the cavity down on this one. It's not touching the edge of the headstock. If I hadn't taken it down, it would have scored the edge of this mint condition, limited edition, soft tail Harley Davidson Strat headstock. Not a good thing. A little bit extra caution goes a long way when you're dealing with valuable instruments. All right, now we'll have another look at that bridge and see if those 9 to 46 strings made any difference. Yeah. They leveled that plate out nice and even with the top. 9 to 46, that's the ticket. Those springs were adjusted from the factory for 9 to 46. So that's balanced perfectly. We definitely got to bring the action down. And we'll dress those frets at the neck junction, make up our self-adjusting radius gauge, and cut our compensated nut. We still have quite a bit of adjustment here on these saddles, but they are protruding a little bit. I prefer not to have the screws sticking out so much. Okay, we're going to bring you in really close here so you can have a look at this action. Uh, it's way too high. There's a couple of things we're going to have to do in order to make this play its best. And this measures in 30 seconds of an inch. We basically got four thirty seconds or an eighth of an inch from the top of the crown of the 12th fret to the underside of the string. On the treble side we got three thirty seconds. Still a little high. I'm going to bring in the tolerances closer than that, but before I do anything else I want to show you the dilemma that we're facing right now. So the way this is right now we have about 67 thou of uh, space on the back of that plate. So that allows you to pull up on the bar. So what I've got here is I've got a 20 thou thick mahogany veneer shim. Let's zoom in and see how much of a difference that 20 thou veneer made. So now that distance is, it's like a 30 second of an inch. It's too close. This is a good thing because what that means is we now have to raise these saddle. That'll drop those set screws into the body of the saddle itself and they'll no longer be sort of jamming in your the palm of your hand when you're playing. So this is a good thing. So just tilting that back 20 thou on this end made all that difference. 
So we have this concave radius match to the end of the fingerboard. Now we're going to make a convex self-adjusting radius gauge. We've verified that radius, so we now have a convex radius to match this concave radius that we took off the ground of the fret. I have adjusted the two outside strings, six and one. They're touching the radius gauge. The middle four are not touching. After doing this for a half a century, I have my own way of doing it. I know it's not a bad idea to get a little gauge and measure. Uh, I really do it by eye now. But I've set up the, the low E and the high E. The four middle strings are hiked up. They are, they're not touching that gauge yet. So what I do is I bring each one down. I, now this is very low density foam. So I don't want the pressure of the string to lower the gauge. I just want to touch that wood. That's it. After I set up the intonation, I will check this again. So to guarantee that perfect radius, after your intonation and all the final tweaking is done, you slip in that little self-adjusting radius gauge. This takes all the guesswork out of getting a perfect match to your fingerboard radius. Okay, you can see since doing all those adjustments now, the back of the bridge is tilted up a little bit. I'm not going to start splitting hairs over this. Some people actually like it that high. Okay, here's our mint Harley Davidson Strat. And this is why you need to do a fret dress at the neck junction. That action is not too close. And I noticed uh, when Jody brought it, like it was hiked up really high. And how many times have I said this? If they're not set up to do proper fret dressing, then the only answer they have to get rid of the buzzing is to hike up the action. That's not the answer. Before we go any further now, I'll do a dress at the neck to body junction and I'm going to dress it full length. We're going to be taking that nut out and putting a compensated nut in anyway, so we'll do both at the same time. Well, I have to admit, this HD soft tail Harley Davidson Fender Strat is quite a sight to look at. It's pretty amazing. But all those bells and whistles don't amount to much if you can't play the guitar. As you saw, it was splatting out at the top end. And we leveled that out. We're going to recrown and polish. There were multiple spots along the length of this fingerboard that needed to be addressed. So we removed that nut so I could dress full length because there were some spots around here that needed to be dressed. So we got that truss rod with just the minimal amount of tension. Got the lay of the neck as good as we could possibly get it and then went full length along the trajectory of the string path and got this thing dead level. Well here's our countdown to ecstasy. These frets are now perfect along the trajectory of the string path. Polished to a mirror shine. Now we're just fitting that compensated nut and we are just an hour or so away from strat perfection. Here's the acid test for that bar. It's pretty well done. I'm just kind of quadruple checking it for the last time. Okay, now that this uh, Harley Strat is behaving itself, uh, I'm going to play it a little bit, check it out. Just going to loop this A minor ish thing. Mm -hmm. 